Um, hi everyone, my name is Christine Lee and I'm currently a junior at Sage Hill School and today I'm going to be talking about smart 3D printing surveillance and detecting failures within 3D printing. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the first question is what is 3D printing? So 3D printing is basically using a model and constructing something like real life through that. And it's a type of additive manufacturing, which means that um, using filament or other type of substances, you can create something out of it. And we have three different types of printer, main different types of printers. The first one is called FDM, which is a filament-based printer that most people use like when you 3D print. And it's also the one that I'm gonna be focusing on throughout my presentation. And then the second one is called SLA, which is you use like resin and then you harden it through UV light. And the last one is SLM, which is powder based. And so there's part, I'm gonna explain like the basic parts of a 3D printer. There are six parts. The first one is gonna be the motion controllers. So a 3D printer moves on an XYZ axis, which means it can go left, right, and up. And then now we have the print bed, which is where the filament goes on. Um, the print bed can be heated or non-heated. It's typically heated so that um, the filament can stick onto it. But when the print is done, it, it like cools off. And then the extruder unloads the filament. Um, the frame of the 3D printer just gives it like a bit of structure and stability and then connectivity. And then the final one is obviously the filament, which is the material used to print the, um, like your design. So in this case, filament is often um, like plastic, use like plastic, but it has different applications to it. Okay, so why should you care about 3D printing? Um, besides, obviously, well, when I, I, I thought, I heard about 3D printing when I was in third grade, actually. Um, I read it in a school magazine and it was basically talking about how people can now use 3D printing to um, 3D print vegetarian options. Like you can 3D print meat for um, vegetarians and I thought that was really cool. And back then 3D printing I would say was still kind of a relatively new concept. Um, but now it's developed a lot. So for example, um, there's something called 3D bioprinting which you use cells to print out organs, and this is still a new concept, but it's something I'm very interested in. And there's also Invisalign, which I use Invisalign, so it helps to make your teeth straighter. And 3D printing can also be used to construct homes. So there's a lot of different applications with 3D printing, and I believe that it's definitely something that as time moves forward, it's gonna change our lives a lot. But 3D printing can also um, fail um, and it's, it's successful to put um, failures if like the temperature is too high, then the filament doesn't like print properly. So for example, in this photo, you can see it's, so, uh, it's like spaghetti, which is a term we use to call, like it kind of looks like spaghetti because the filament isn't printing properly. Um, and this can happen with a blocked nozzle or like just stringing in loose, uh, oozing. And sometimes it's due to poor filament quality or printing too fast. So um, these type of failures happen a lot. So I wanted to do something that would kind of combat this issue. And personally, I have a few friends who really like to 3D print. And um, 3D printing takes a long time. Like you print something small and it takes like six hours. And I had this friend who would like set a print in the morning and then go to school and then come back and then the 3D printing, the 3D print would be like messed up and then he'd have to start all over again. So I decided why not make, make an app that can like track um, whether the 3D printing is failing or not. So there are some previous works that have been done in 3D printing. The first one, automated process monitoring in 3D printing using supervised machine learning. It proposes a way to access, uh, like assess the quality of 3D printed parts with a camera um, and image processing and supervised machine learning. So in this study, they, they 3D printed something um, and they took pictures at critical parts of the printing process. 
and they used a specific machine learning type method called support vector machine, which like classifies the parts into good or defective category, and they also use different types of filaments to get a little bit of diversity. But the main drawback is um, when they were taking pictures, they had to stop the 3D printing process. But obviously, when you're 3D printing something, you're not going to stop the process. So that was kind of like a flaw. And um, when they were taking pictures, they only used from like the top, so like bird's eye view, um, which isn't really helpful because, I mean, it is helpful, but like you want to have pictures that are from the sides too. Um, yeah. And then the second is a study of failure detection a study of failure detection and prediction for FDM 3D printers. Um, and this, oh, this, um, this article was talking, is also like failure, like detecting 3D printers and it uses real time monitoring of the 3D printing process. It also uses like machine learning. Um, but the algorithm like doesn't have limitations, so it doesn't detect certain types of failures, for example, warping is one of them, which is with when like the 3D printer, um, like when the filament goes on the print bed and it shrinks and it warps the 3D printer. Okay, or the 3D print. So I came, oh, <laughs> I came up with a solution. Um, so my first, sorry, give me one second. Um, I decided to create a three, an AI model, and then I, okay. So I fed it like a thousand photos, and I translated, I did this in Google Colab, and I tr fed it a thousand photos of successful and unsuccessful um, 3D prints, and 900 were f fed into an AI model to like train it into differentiating which ones were right or wrong, and then the remaining 100 pictures were shown to the model to detect whether the 3D printing was going well or not. And then I designed an app in Visual Studio Code, um, like I used Flutter, and then I created like a login page and a status page so that it can be like easy access for users instead of like actually accessing the code. And then I used um, a real-time database in Firebase to link the first and the second combines together. Um, and so every time the pictures were taken using um, like a Raspberry Pi, which I'll explain later, uh, it would like go in, it would automatically go into the database to show whether or not the 3D print was going right or not. Okay, so here are the things I used. I used Flutter, um, which is a framework that produces mobile apps, and everything was coded in Visual Studio Code so it could provide like better access and content, like the pictures, um, the statuses, the timestamps, everything. Um, and so instead of loading everything up on a like, database with a lot of data, you can just go into the app with a few taps, and the app is basically um, just a way for users to see what is going on with the printer at the moment, and then the real-time database just stores all the data. So I have a little diagram for you to see. Um, I used, so the AI model, and then it was transferred onto a Raspberry Pi, which was connected to an Arduino camera, um, so that I could test it in real life, because you want real life um, results. So I ran the, the Raspberry Pi and the model, um, and then I like 3D printed something random and purposely like tried to make it fail or tried to have it successful and I basically just took pictures and every time it takes a picture it to the database it sends the photo, the status it thinks it is and also the timestamp. So for users if they want to use the app then they know like what exactly, when exactly um, the failure might have went wrong. And then everything else, so the database is then transferred onto the app. Okay, so here are my results. Um, as you can see, for 3D prints that I purposely tried to make successful, I had 78 data samples, and 78 predicted like correct 3D printing. So it predicted that it was 3D printing, and it was 3D printing successfully. Um, but for 
failed, the ones that I purposely failed, I had 95 data samples and 80% correctly detected that it was 3D printing failure, but there were 15 incorrect, and there were also a few that had like corrupted files, so um, yeah. But in general, it had a 91.3% accuracy rate, so here are the numbers again. So I, for 3D printing, it was 78 to zero, and then for failure, it was 80 to 15 incorrect, and then 18 corrupted files. And then also on the top, you can kind of see my like process. This was like the actual photos that we used. Um, so for this one, obviously, the 3D printing is going wrong, um, but the status I fed back was 3D printing, which is incorrect. But for this one, in a different photo, you can see that still going wrong, but the status shows that it's also gone wrong, which is correct. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about challenges. Um, training the model was kind of a challenge. There's something called epochs, which are like data sets, and it's imperative like the epochs are not too big or too small. Um, like the big epochs are able to update neural ne networks better, but they're overfitting and they require more time to train. But on the other hand, small epochs spend less time and they underfit. So you have to find it, it's important to find like the proper amount um, so that the model can train like a moderate amount of time and accuracy and get the results that you wanted. And another challenge was to, okay, this is kind of small, but to focus the camera, um, the accuracy of the program heavily relies on whether the camera is actually like looking at it um, and how well it can like view the printer and give back, cor give correct feedback. So um, a challenge I faced was it originally was not focusing, uh, which kind of interfered with my data, but I eventually um, found like autofocus features to help it like look at the printer. Um, okay, and then obviously there's, my, my study is, that's not the end of it. There's a lot that can be done. Um, for example, so it can be used in cybersecurity and there are also, I found there are online crane games which a lot of people play during COVID-19 and it's basically kind of like, um, you know those like in-person like crane games where you move around the claw machine and then they get a toy? They have like online versions of those as well. Um, so that similarly moves on an XYZ axis which I think could be applied to like games, arcade games. Um, and obviously there's a lot more experiments that needed to be done. Um, I used only one type of printer and one type of filament and one type of wall but there has to be, well, not only just more pictures, but running it with different types of backgrounds and filaments. So for example, if you have black filament against a black background, how well is it gonna work? Because everything is gonna blend together. So it's important like the, the camera knows how to differentiate between the print and the, back, the wall. And then um, another thing could also just be like types of failures. So for example, originally I mentioned warping. There's also like power outage. Like the like, if like it just stops immediately, then it needs to know that the print has not been printing. And obviously like the aesthetic app of the app is um, something else that needs to be improved on. Okay, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Um, sorry. Um, I can take like one or two. Like, I think it's me. You just want one or two? Yeah. All right. Um, thank you so much. That was a great talk. Um, so, uh, Christine says she can just take one or two questions. So, take yours. I have a question. What, uh, um, what coding language is the app, the AI, and the database written in? The database might use SQL. Does the database use SQL? And uh, what language is the app and the AI written in? Um, so I trained the AI model with Python. Um, yeah, it's a pretty like well-known like <laughs> language. You use it? Are you learning how to code right now? Um, yes, I also use HTML. Oh, wow. <laughs> I have kind of two related questions. Um, 
looked in your slides like the training data you're using was black and white. Is that correct? Or yes. And is all right. And then when you said you created the model and then transferred it onto the Pi, did you train it on the Pi or train it on a bigger machine and then transfer the model onto? I the trained pie? it on the Pi. Oh, you did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then what about the black and white imagery? What? Oh, sorry. What about the black and white imagery? What's the? Um. So, are you talking about this? Yeah. Oh, why are they not in cover? Oh, this is in cover. Um, the printer is uh, black and in the filament is white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's our Okay, I just have a comment. That was yeah. a great uh, project, and that was a really good presentation. You speak well. <laughs>